Although the sole prototype of this peculiar jet still exists, it is in a state of disrepair and is stored in a field close to Moscow. However, it was once the Soviet Union's best defense against U.S. submarine raids. The Bartini Beria VVA-14 was intended to be able to take off from any location that did not have a runway and be able to maintain flight just above the water surface for an extended period of time. The letters in the name are an acronym for Vertical Takeoff Amphibious Aircraft, and the number 14 refers to the number of engines. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to Military Planes, where we tell you about warplanes, from the currently famous in the air to the most advanced around the world. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell symbol so that you don't miss out on any of our wonderful videos in the future. And let's get started. The ballistic missiles known as Polaris inspired the design of the aircraft, which was completed in the 1960s. As a component of its nuclear deterrent, the USA began installing them on its submarine fleet in the year 1961. Robert Bartini, who was responsible for designing the amphibious VVA-14, had the idea that it would be the ideal piece of equipment to hunt down and kill submarines that carried missiles. However, the strategy did not work out as expected. Only two of the three prototypes that were originally planned to be built ever materialized, and only one of those prototypes was ever tested in flight. The project came to an end in 1974 after Bartini passed away, and the second prototype was destroyed at that time. The first one, which was delivered in 1987 with most of its parts, was supposed to go to the Central Air Force Museum close to Moscow, but the transfer was unsuccessful for some reason. The airplane was destroyed as a result of looting and has not been restored since the incident. Dragon with three different heads, the VVA-14 was developed to be capable of vertical takeoff and landing from either land or water. According to Andrei Sovenko, a historian of Soviet aviation, the VVA-14 was a flying boat that was intended to take off from water or land vertically and then fly like a regular plane at altitude after it reached a certain height. During the planning stages of the aircraft, Savenko crossed paths with Nikolai Pogorelov in 2005. Pogorelov was Robert Bartini's deputy. Pogorelov claimed that Bartini was a visionary with an extraordinary mind and personality. It appeared as though he was from a different age entirely, and one person even referred to him as an extraterrestrial because of this perception. There is no question that Bartini has left his imprint on the aircraft manufacturing industry in the Soviet Union. However, he got famous mostly due to his ideas and conceptions, and very few of those ideas and concepts were ever implemented in the real world, says Savenko. Bartini, who fled his home in Italy for the Soviet Union in 1923 after the rise of the fascists, has envisioned several different variations of the VVA-14 before he moved to the Soviet Union. These variations included one with inflatable pontoons to land on water and another with folding wings that could be operated from ships while they were at sea. 1972 was the year that saw the maiden flight of the first prototype. After that, pontoons were added to it and it was put to test in the water. This aircraft lacked both lifting engines and an equipment that would have been useful in the search for submarines. Only the characteristics of horizontal flight were going to be studied, and the systems of the aircraft were going to be put to the test. Between the years 1972 and 1975, it completed a total of 107 flights and logged more than 103 hours in the air, says Sabenko. Because of its peculiar appearance, it became known as Zmai Gorinich, which is the name of a dragon that appears in Russian fairy tales. When looking at it from the ground, the VVA-14 generated understandable associations with Zmai Gorinich. She too had, as it were, three heads and rather short wings, said Savenko. When looking at it from the ground, the VVA-14 caused understandable links with Zmai Gorinich. A brief second chance at life. After it became clear that the project's intended purpose would not be achieved, the Soviet military decided to shelve it. Courtesy Andrei Selenkov, the second prototype was meant to get the engines for vertical takeoff, but the engines were never installed on the nearly finished plane because a type of engine that would have been suited for vertical takeoff was never produced. Because of this, the project was cancelled and the aircraft was taken apart. Ekranoplans are a type of aircraft that use the ground effect to glide near a surface like water at high speed in the same manner that hovercraft do. Bartini attempted to breathe fresh life into the VVA-14 by transforming it into an Ekranoplan. The results of this test, which were carried out shortly after Bartini's passing, were able to inform the creation of additional aircraft of this type, thereby establishing the Soviet Union as the undisputed leader in the field. In spite of this conclusion, however, the project had run its course and was finished. 
I believe that the Soviet military came to the conclusion very early that the VVA-14 would not have been an effective anti-submarine aircraft. It was only capable of transporting a very small number of missiles, and the technical problems involved in developing such an odd vehicle were very significant. In the end, the military was forced to rely on more conventional aircraft to complete the task, says Savenko. Following its retirement, the first prototype was moved by barge from Taganrog in southern Russia, where it had been built and tested, to Likarino, a tiny village located close to Moscow. After being unloaded on land, it was left ignored and eventually dismantled and burned in part. The aircraft was eventually moved to the Central Air Force Museum in nearby Monino via helicopter. Nevertheless, the plane is still in a critical condition to this day. In point of fact, certain pieces of the original prototype have been lying around in Monino in the shape of scrap metal for the past 33 years. I'm not sure why the administration of the museum won't take steps to restore this extremely intriguing aircraft, but it's something that puzzles me," says Savenko. The Central Air Force Museum in Russia estimates that the amount needed to restore the aircraft would be approximately $1.2 million. The majority of the Central Air Force Museum is open air. The VVA-14, along with the majority of the other aircraft in the museum's collection, which is the largest in the world when it comes to Soviet planes, has been sitting outside. It can be found tucked away in a corner of the display, and it is immediately obvious that it is without its wings. According to what can be observed on Google Maps, several components of both them and the airframe appear to be lying in close proximity to it. Back in 2012, representatives from the aviation plant in Taganrog, which is where the VVA-14 was produced, pledged to aid in the hunt for spare parts for the VVA-14, he recalls. However, the lack of funds did not allow these aspirations to be achieved. He goes on to say that the restoration would cost approximately $1.2 million if funding were to be secured and it would take between one and two years if aviation specialists worked on it directly at the museum. If funding were to be secured, however, the cost of the restoration would be around $1.2 million. According to Savenko, the VVA-14 would have been an extremely one-of-a-kind aircraft if it had been fully finished and put through its paces of testing. It had the potential to take off and land in both a horizontal and vertical orientation, on either land or water respectively. It had the potential to remain afloat for an extended period of time and engage in anti-submarine warfare in that configuration. And of course, it was also capable of flying in the manner of a conventional airplane, he explains. Its unusual and remarkable attribute was that it could be used in a variety of contexts. Despite this, the VVA-14 was never quite able to live up to its full potential. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comment space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.